the expectation of privacy as to automobiles is further diminished by the obviously public nature of automobile travel. Grow, don't be limited. If you start off at one point and find in some information, don't remain there because of the gratification that it gives you. There's always a social element to information. And that social element of seeing other people do it is what keeps people in a state of stupor. Just because a thousand people are doing it doesn't mean they're correct. In fact, the way the algorithm of Earth, as we know it in today's world, works is that the more people do certain things, the more you also stop and think, all right, why are most of these people doing this? Even in a small pocket of reality that you exist in. And when you do this, you're putting a red flag on yourself. Regardless of where you think you got this information from on social media. It's just some trash that just popped up one day. Why? because it's a counterintelligence program to easily identify slaves that they've caught, slaves that are trying to run away to be free. Therefore, in the age of technology, how do you catch a runaway slave? Put misinformation out there. Well, here I am once more to break your bubble. I'm here to break your bubble, not because of some personal gripe towards you, contrary to what most might think, contrary to what most assumption that everyone's words indeed revolves around their small boxed in perception of reality i'm here to break your bubble out of sincere love everyone is attempted to figure things out some has it figured out others a little bit more than the next man the rest just clueless this thing you and i find ourselves intertwined with is so vast and infinite that we're all constantly attempting to figure out something and it is our task to do so this is how we evolve. It is in our natural operating system to evolve. We are put here primarily, as far as nature's law is concerned, for the purpose of growth. You and I are success to the degree that we grow. And we grow to the degree that we are wiser and aware of how reality works in this of This is why change is the only thing that is constant. Change is the only constant attribute of reality because the purpose of change is growth and lesson. The divine intelligence you and I are inevitably connected to, whether you will like to accept it or not, it being change and growth, whether you like to accept it or not, the divinity that connects you to everything else is far more concerned about growth and improvement than any of the mundane trash and instant gratification that we find ourselves concerned with. Even when the information is delivered to us in a manner that basically breaks our bubble. Even when we listen to the information with the expectation that, all right, I really don't like listening to this guy, but I'll listen to it nonetheless because, well, maybe I can learn something. Even though deep down we might be somewhat upset deep inside because the things we've worked hard for and the hopes that we've placed in it is being shattered by preponderance of evidence and more importantly, common sense. And even those mundane trash most people grasp onto Believe it or not, they serve their purpose. Because when observed closely, those mundane things exist for the purpose of your growth. If then growth presents itself as an opportunity for you to grow by change, and you shun and ignore it, you are working to your own detriment. Because anything around you can be observed and thought about, and a lesson be learned from it. The fact that you're watching this video is no accident. It might be a coincidence, because a coincidence is just two things happening at once. Cold, two incidents, something occurring. It's not an accident. But it might be a coincidence, though. You might have been looking into things of this nature when it comes to what? Well, when it comes to traveling privately. Whatever level of refinement of information that you're currently at, it is in your own intrinsic system to comprehend those things. Beyond the instant gratification, the anger, the fear, and the need to do that thing where you feel like, ha, ah, I just did it. Ah, I just said it. Know the why and how behind it. And more importantly, don't set yourself backwards while enforcing the intent to be free. Don't be counterproductive, as it's been said in the past. If you do not know, and the tort feaser does not care to know. You're, for the lack of a better term, fucked. 
because those taking advantage of you want you to stay ignorant because your ignorance is what gives validity to their role playing because your ignorance is what gives validity to their role playing because your ignorance is what gives validity to their role playing to them they need you to be as dumb as possible to eat the counterintelligence program that they've put out there for you to consume so that they could have a role in society to keep making money off of your ignorance of your life force being consumed day after the other and from you remaining stuck on a rhetoric that does not benefit you grow you've seen some plate like this the social media somewhere somehow or maybe you might be one of the people who creates these because some way somehow someone told you your vehicle is a private property absolutely true but it can only be a private property if you secure the interest in it through trust and contract law nine out of ten people putting this in their plates don't do that which has been shown in this video on patreon page nine out of ten people don't do the basic requirements to even truly validate privacy when it comes to right to properties in effect as a the fourth amendment on a united states level and preempted through other state constitutions through their respective bill of rights so most people don't do those things in an affirmation video nonetheless they put things on their property saying private not for commercial use because someone has convinced them through some pdfs or through some long-winded three or four hour lecture that your property is private that if they put a plate on their property saying that it's private then it is so it is so if you enforce certain things privately first and even if that's the case you have to comprehend the moment you start to intertwine with other humans in a public space such as the road you are involved in public scrutinies which you went over in many many other videos such as these ones Another misconception as to why people put these on their plates is they assume that when they are inside their vehicle that they have something called reasonable expectation of privacy, even though that's an actual phrase, reasonable expectation of privacy, according to common law, whether you to look at it from the perspective of judge made or you're to look at it from the language of state legislature. But guess what? Most people who put this on their license plate on their vehicles don't even know that that's a legal standard also. That's a concept that exists legally. But nonetheless, that's what they're attempting to enforce. And that standard of reasonable expectation of privacy we went over in this video. So we're not going to be going over that in this YouTube video. So my assumption is you know what reasonable expectation of privacy is, but if you don't, don't worry. I'll show you a few case laws, particularly relating to privacy and automobiles, any type of machinery that is utilized in a public roadway. I'm here to break your bubble, not because of some spite, according to some fear mongering and instant gratification that most assume is the reason why people are telling them a contrary reality to what they're familiar with. I am here to break your bubble so that you're just a little bit more competent than you were yesterday so that you will make your time more worth it and potentially save yourself the valuable asset called time and monies why you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy in your automobile South Dakota versus Opperman year 1976 United States Supreme Court 90 to 99 percent of all the rest of the cards that's shown on this page either it's revealed on patreon exclusively or just on youtube are always supreme court if it's not in a supreme court state level it would always be in a supreme court united states level where with the supreme court state level full faith and credit applies in other states according to article 4 of the united states constitution and the 1777 version and if it's on a United States Supreme Court level, it evenly applies on all 50 states because all these 50 states are the ones that come together to become the United States. Therefore, when the Supreme Court of the United States makes a decision, it is as though all 50 states have unanimously made such decision. Basic operation 
of law that presumably you, the one listening to this, are readily aware of. South Dakota versus Opperman, 1976, case number 75-76. This fresh judicata has yet to be overturned. Those on Patreon has the link to double check cases that has been overturned when it comes to constitutionality and by what case and for what reason. If you're not a patron member, it's, it's all right. You have technological luxury right in front of you. You can always look it up using any desired search engine. You don't have to wait for someone else to hand it to you. Remember, one rest of the card can entertain about 50 different things. So what we're speaking of here is, do you really have privacy when you start that machine and you start rolling the wheels down the public roads? Remember, the venue that that machine is being used is a public one. In other words, your own activity as a private man, which you have the right to. And in fact, you should always learn that because privacy is the core and the backbone of all that's listed in the Bill of Rights, all the way from the First Amendment to the tent on a federal level and however long yours is in your respective Bill of Rights in your state. So it's good that you have privacy in your mind. But now the question is when your affair as a private man that you have the right to, when your fear now begins to intertwine with everyone else, do you retain reasonable expectation of privacy? Which, by the way, has something to do with why they also request you to have insurance on the property, which is another situation that we'll deal with another day. The expectation of privacy in one's automobile is significantly less than that relating to one's home or office. The expectation of privacy in one's automobile is significantly less than that relating to one's home or office. Cardinal versus Lewis. That's one. Here's two. Besides the element of mobility, less rigorous men in one of the criteria used to determine the level of privacy that one can have or not is whether it's a movable property or not. If it's a movable property, then there's a chance that you can intertwine said property and affairs with that property with other human beings, which chips away at privacy, unless these other parties have uniform intent as yours. But guess what? Most people going around using those public road, which is a venue of its own, which automatically tells you which classification it is, a public road, public. Most people on those roads don't have the same intent as you. They're not using it for the same significance that you think you are. Therefore, their interests vary from yours. Therefore, you don't retain privacy in a way that you assert. Can you still retain privacy using contract and trust law with your vehicle? Yep, you can. But guess what? This right here is not the way this. It's just putting a red flag in yourself where it ought not to be that way. Two is this. Besides the element of mobility, less rigorous warrant requirements govern. Meaning rigorous requirements to actually ascertain that they do have warrants in order to search, seize, or do anything with that thing you consider your private property is less, meaning there's less scrutiny on their end. Because recall, that requirement of warrants in the Fourth Amendment federal level, or whatever verbiage in your state constitution, is there to limit governmental actors. In other words, scrutiny is on them. But if the private property in dispute being used in public space interrelating with other people in a public space, the moment it is moved from one place to the other, less rigorous warrant requirements governs. Warrant for the purpose of search and seizure. Because the expectation of privacy with respect to one's automobile is significantly less than that relating to one's home or office. While the Fourth Amendment speaks broadly, broadly, broadly in terms of unreasonable searches and seizure the decision in this court have recognized that the definition of quote reasonableness turns at least in part on the more specific dictates of the warrant clause the warrant clause is the requirement probable cause in order for a warrant to be issued for a particular place and time and persons to be searched and seized as we all know basic stuff or at least i surmise we all know that basics at this point and that warrant clause is sits 
on something called a probable cause. In this video, we went over the fact that probable cause is a standard of element that is already low. And probable cause, a low standard of evidence, favors the one asserting the probable cause, not the one to which probable cause is being asserted against. The one probable cause is being asserted against being you. The probable cause only favors the one pointing fingers at you. This rest for the card mentioned that this thing called the Fourth Amendment relating to someone requiring warrants to search your property, to seize it based on probable cause, is quite broad. It then goes on to say, although the court has validated warrantless searches of automobiles in circumstances that would not justify a search of a home or office. In other words, home or office have higher requirements and scrutinies of probable cause compared to automobiles. And because of that, the rest of the cars have said in the past that we don't necessarily need a warrant to search a vehicle. But now you have to know the difference between a seizure, a search, a terrorist stop, which we went over in the past. That's something called the plain view doctrine, which is another scrutiny that is applicable to why automobiles don't necessarily fall under the higher end of scrutiny of warrant requirement. You must know these doctrines. Again, doctrine, standards, tests, elements. They're the core of what you say your rights are. If you don't know it, you're still lying to yourself. Although the court has validated warrantless, the court has validated warrantless searches of automobile and circumstances that would not justify a search of a home or office. The circumstances where a warrant doesn't have to exist to search automobiles is not the same when it comes to homes or office. Why? Because of the first two points read earlier. These decisions establish no general quote-unquote automobile exceptions to the warrant requirement. Rather, they demonstrate that quote, for the purpose of the Fourth Amendment, remember you're in a federal level Supreme Court so they will use federal jurisdiction which is a federal constitution aka the Fourth Amendment, even though it can be evoked in all states also. Rather, they demonstrate, quote, for the purpose of Fourth Amendment, which speaks of principles, which is also spoken of on a state level. Although if you know why state constitution exists a certain way, you would know that state constitutions are actually better than federal, which we went over in this video on Patreon. But we're not speaking of that here. But know that despite the fact that it's speaking of Fourth Amendment being the federal, it is evenly applicable on a state level also. Quote unquote, for the purpose of the Fourth Amendment, there is a constitutional difference for the purpose of Fourth Amendment. There is a constitutional difference between houses and cars. Quoting Chambers versus Maroney. A difference that may in some cases justify a warrantless search. And some of the examples given here is because of the purpose of routine inventory search or routine checks when it comes to expired plates, license plates, um, broken headlights, so and so. And then goes on to justify the perspective by saying warrants also have been required outside the context of criminal investigation. The court held that absent consent, a warrant was necessary to conduct an area-wide building code inspection. Now it's going into buildings, not vehicles. But I'm reading this specific sentence because usually your consent is still required for your vehicle to still be searched, which is the loophole where if they don't have a warrant, they need your consent. That is still important and that must always be kept in mind. So it's not always doom and gloom, but Wait a minute, what about this right here? You put that your vehicle is private because you say it is, even though you really haven't put in a trust, even though you really haven't truly have a trust be an actual secure party to that property, and you truly actually don't have any other first lien holder against that property. Most people finance or lease their vehicles, and they're pretending to themselves that it's private. And those that don't finance or lease it don't know how trust law works or contract law. 
So now what about this? Despite all of that that we mentioned, all right? Not a problem. The expectation of privacy as to automobiles is further diminished by the obviously public nature of automobile travel. Do you see how people abandon this very, very important mental faculty called common sense when it comes to being led on by what they read on social media by people who are broke, angry, and incompetent? Those three combinations are the worst combination you can find in a human being. The same broke, angry, and incompetent people are the ones telling you do this do that and what they're telling you to do they themselves are not going to do it or they've never done it or what they're telling you to do will waste your time and monies what makes that bad is the fact that there's an alternative that actually works that does preserve the integrity of your privacy when it comes to your own actual information or the protection of someone snatching up that property called vehicle there's an alternative means to actually do it, which is constitutional, which does abide by trust and contract law, that actually holds tort feasors liable. And that way, it's not this right here. It is not this right here. Whatever you see that's very popular, know that there's some part that exists relating to it that's not so popular, but it's the original stuff that works. But the one that's popular that you see everywhere that is pushed by zealous people who like to throw around sophisticated stuff without really showing you the source, the substance, the why and how of it, but just leading you on based on emotional triggers. Those are people that will screw your life up. People you haven't seen or met. That's the power of social media. They will fuck your life up. When in truth, you just have to take some more time to learn about how trust and contract work and you can effectuate this without doing this because the reality is if you're in a public space there's no reasonable expectation of privacy by the nature of activity of that movable property called your automobile your car vehicle whatever it is you want to term it good either way the function of it and what applies to it is so grow don't be limited if you start off at one point finding some information, don't remain there because of the gratification that it gives you. There's always a social element to information. And that social element of seeing other people do it is what keeps people in a state of stupor. Just because a thousand people are doing it doesn't mean they're correct. In fact, the way the algorithm of Earth, as we know it in today's world, works is that the more people do certain things, the more you also stop and think, all right, why are most of these people doing this? even in a small pocket of reality that you exist in, even if you think you're doing something special. The expectation of privacy as to automobile is further diminished by the obviously public nature. People who assert that they're private do not realize that what makes them private is based on their activity. The public nature of automobile travel, only two terms ago the court noted, quote unquote, one has a lesser expectation of privacy in a motor vehicle because its function is transportation and it seldom serves one's residence, meaning privacy is more valued in a place of abode or as the repository of personal effect. Privacy is more valued where you have things in form of storage. And then other things were said and they went on to say it travels public thoroughfares where both its occupant and its contact are in plain view. So this term plain view, there's something called plain view doctrine, which contributes to why your automobile in a public space is not private at all. And when you do this, you're putting a red flag on yourself, regardless of where you think you got this information from on social media. It's just some trash that just popped up one day. Why? Because it's a counterintelligence program to easily identify slaves that they've caught Slaves that are trying to run away to be free. Therefore, in the age of technology, how do you catch a runaway slave? Put misinformation out there and have them come out into the real world and forcing that misinformation. That way you can identify your own property that you've tagged because of the misinformation that you've placed 
deliberately in certain places where you know people are coming together in an attempt to be free. This is an evidence of that, whether you would like to accept it or not. But remember, forget my words, forget what you think about what you assume my personality is. Look at the objective truth and the fact behind our reality works. And the fact that solution actually exists without putting this trash on yourself. Plain view doctrine. Within that past verse that Carter just shown, they're not gonna tell you plain view. Those two words, plain view, they're not gonna tell you it's a doctrine. They're not going to tell you it's a principle of some sort. They're just gonna casually use it in the middle of a sentence under the assumption that the one reading it knows what they're looking at under the assumption that the one reading it has the eyes to see. In case you didn't know, the word plain view is an actual term and it's an actual legal doctrine. Relating to the subject matter at hand, here it is, plain view doctrine. In case we're not clear, what is a doctrine? A doctrine is a single important rule, a set of rule, a theory, or a principle that is widely followed in the field of law that is formed by the continuous application of legal precedents, aka judge-made law. Calling something a doctrine usually means at least one of two things, that it is very important to a field of law or that it provides a comprehensive way to resolve a certain type of legal dispute. In other words, doctrine is the lens to which certain things are perceived, independent of speculations that you think you found somewhere on the internet based on instant gratification and some level of hate that deeply exists amongst those pushing information to you even though your heart might be fine and pure but someone who is impure will corrupt you and your purity so now you have to defragment that disc you have to brainwash yourself off the trash of a program that's a detriment to you that's keeping you stuck in a stage of docility and stupor. Be competent. Plain view doctrine is a rule of criminal procedure which allows an officer to seize evidence of a crime without a warrant when the evidence is clearly visible. Guess what? They're gonna see something and say, we don't know whether that's a weapon. In other words, they're tiptoeing into Terry stop now because the purpose of Terry stop is to frisk someone to engage in a mild form of search which we've went over the elements of many other videos in the past without a warrant so now they're going to merge plain view doctrine with the tiptoe version of terry stop and say okay we don't know what that is but for our safety which is one of the criteria of terry stop we see something in plain view therefore we're going to try to search it that's part of the scrutiny as to why that automobile in a public space, because of its nature of use, does not have any privacy, at least as you think, and at least as you've been conditioned. The Doctrine Act as an exception to the Fourth Amendment right to be free from searches without a warrant. This Doctrine Act as an exception to the Fourth Amendment right to be free from searches without a warrant. So you see now when a lot of people tell you things as though it is just one-sided and limited and as though it's just the holy grail and nothing more. Realize that there are always loop holes. And this is part of the loopholes that you must know when you intend to assert your privacy rights. It is your responsibility. Rights are powers because rights are just the extension and the expression of your essence on a piece of paper. And your essence is powerful. And because of that power, you have responsibility that comes in many forms. And one of that form of responsibility is when tortfeasors attempt to create loopholes to your own essence called a right, which is just an extension of what you really are on a piece of paper that you have to bring to light. When loopholes are created, you must know it. That is a responsibility that is important to you, especially if you are saying or claiming that you have a right. The claiming of the right is not the bad part. The claiming of the right is not the hard part. Knowing the loopholes to that right that you are certain 
is what's the most important relative to that right itself. And it becomes hard when you are not aware of these loopholes. Also referred to as clear view doctrine or plain sight rule. Courts have imposed requirement for an officer's seizure of evidence without a warrant, without a warrant, without a warrant to be valid for one. At the U.S. Supreme Court in Collins versus Virginia explains, the officer seizing the evidence must have a lawful right to access or observe the seized property. That is, if the officer violated the Fourth Amendment or another law in arriving at the location or situation where they had access or sight to the object, then the plain view doctrine does not apply. However, as the Supreme Court in Horton versus California clarified, the discovery of evidence and reliance on the plain view doctrine does not need to be inadvertent. That is, officers can intentionally situate themselves where they believe they will observe a crime or find evidence, aka Terry Stop, and may obtain evidence without a warrant if the evidence is found in plain sight, provided, of course, that the officer did not violate any laws in situating themselves. I also bring this plain view doctrine up to let you know there are many circumstances where tort physicians will situate themselves because they know you don't know what plain field doctrine is. They know you don't know what the criteria and standard and element of a Terry stop is. Therefore, they will misrepresent facts. They will lie to you by looking at you in the eye. They will cut you off. They will speak fast. They will even yell at you. Do you know the basics of the fact that anyone acting in governmental capacity do not have that thing called reasonable expectation of privacy when engaging in that public capacity. As much as the scrutiny exists against you, whereby you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy when you are in a public space, governmental actors do not have reasonable expectation of privacy when engaging in their capacity as a public employee. Therefore, you can always preserve the integrity of the record. And most importantly, when you know this criteria is in mind, when you start to see the nuance of what they're doing, we can see what's right and what's wrong and how they position themselves because rest of the Carter says they can't position themselves for the purpose of utilizing plain field doctrine and Terry stop. But the question is, what about it is crossing the line? Because at the end of the day, even though they can situate themselves to enforce plain view doctrine and Terry stop, they still are bound by the Fourth Amendment. The loophole of how they do that is by making commands and convincing you and then right in the middle of that, they get you to consent to a search. Simple as that. Or they make some trash up. Know what simulated legal processes and know that traffic stops are just like Terry stops. They must not be prolonged. Outside of that, something else is going on. And that is, in fact, a violation of Fourth Amendment because seizures are supposed to be short and brief. Again, it is your responsibility to know what your rights are. When you know these things, you don't even see all those trash you see on social media where people yell and argue. You don't do that. You have your own modus operandi. You have a regular scheduled program that your subconscious mind triggers automatically, that your conscious mind uses as a form of command to every other part of your mind, superconscious or not, that you just do by default. To your benefit and to the detriment of anyone with bad faith. But the foundation of it is you must first know what's applicable to you and how it's applicable rather than deal with speculations that makes you a victim. Speculations deliberately put out into these social groups by people who actually mean you harm, by putting and using faces of people that you've been following for years after years. Those are the same people leading you on, keeping you enslaved. You're getting older, remember that. The body's wearing out, time is going on. Question is, are you in the same position? Are you still following the same man or woman leading you on with fuckery and keeping you ignorant of the law while telling you ignorance of the law is no excuse? Keeping you in a belligerent state to qualify as someone that ought to be treated like trash. When in truth, you're supposed to know basic principles like this when it comes to the right that you intend to assert. Stop and think. Make it a habit to stop and think whenever some enticing information is introduced to you without realizing that there are dynamics to how things work. Nothing is ever one-sided. Something always has a loophole. Until you really know the loophole to any given right, you don't know the rights. 
and if you don't know the loophole to a right, there's no way you can enforce it because each time you attempt to enforce it, it's always going to be in form of belligerence and ignorance, all while you think you're doing something that's proper. It might be in good faith or not, whatever the case may be, one thing is certain. Competence is something you will never be able to escape because growth is part of the essence embedded into the algorithm of reality. And you are one and the same with reality, whether you like it or not. Prioritize growth over instant gratification. Until next time, take care. Best of luck. I have a Patreon page and I'm inviting you to come join. Are you interested in discharge? We show everything about how it's done and my own experience. Consistent posts are made explaining many things regarding said discharge. Many will seek and simply wouldn't find. Those dealing with mortgage issue or want to know more about it, we speak of it. For those dealing with basic stuff like traffic issues, we speak about the solution and I show it from my own experiences and how I permanently prevent any such issues. Those who learn about trust, different types of trust, we go over so many things consistently regarding trust. We show the IRS manuals. Those who are interested in suing and making money through debt collection or other means, we go over it. We show it. I show my own settlement checks and the things that I've done as a personal experience. Those interested in banking, we show subtle details and intricacies of the things that I have learned. For those interested in other things like the IRS forms and how to put it to use, we show it, we explain the details. For those interested in court-related matters and intricacies, we always show it. For those interested in the spiritual aspect of things and how it works, we show and explain it. For those with child support matters, we explain and we show everything in detail also. Great puzzle pieces that can never be found in other social media platforms, but we explain it all as it relates to many different things those interested in express trust and the issue of how not qualifying for vexation, which I call dengue, how it relates to any other type of trust or any other affairs and how you can intertwine your affairs to the different types of discharge that exist and lack of qualification for taxation. Speak about it. The truth about really recusing attorneys and the whole foreign agent registration and attorney lawyer number, we speak about it. We speak about how to really bring about juries and some of the comment section asks good questions and greater answers are given. We speak about how to get and use tax exemptions for vehicle use and sales. You don't have to belong to some organization. You can actually get yours according to the language of the legislature within your state. Go over the details that a lot of people mentor about regarding Article 1, Article 3. What really makes a court? It's not limited to just your paperwork. Most people don't know. We go over business matters for those with actual businesses, S Corp, C Corp, LLCs, those who are business minded and those who make money. We go over other things that a lot of people don't know, functions internationally. We speak about a lot of other spiritual related matters. Details on how to bring criminal charges, what it truly means to bring criminal charges, what a bill of particular is, how to recuse a judge, details of the parliamentary rules in court and legislature different things about standard of evidence and burden of proof, different things that a lot of people will speak of, discovery, discovery. But did you know there are six types of discoveries? You know how to intertwine your LLCs and S-Corps with an express trust, how to not make them taxable? Do you know when to reverse spraggly arrow really is involved? Do you know how to use your home as a home office? And the many, many details involved. Go over the injunction and how to enforce the different types of injunctions that exist. The intricacies of how data brokers exist and how they store your information. Not just the credit bureaus, but many, many data brokers and how you can prevent them. We go over grants, getting grants. We go over issues and solutions of CPN and how they're created. There are about six or four to five different parts that were created. Go over the caveats where people say sue them, but they don't really know. Go over the things to do after you sue them. We go over the issues of privacy and technology. All the whole thing about perfection of security interest, the UCC and how to use it and how to monetize the birth certificate, all that. <laughs> we go over the details. There are a lot of principles and documents people don't know about that we go over. Go over how to really do the copyright and details involved in it. 
go over how to simply do a trademark. It's far more easier than you think. All these people telling you go to a trademark office, do this, write this letter. It's not that difficult. To go over how to fill out the GSA bond box at a time. And so many more. How to get settlement checks. How to put your vehicle in the trust. I show you from my own experiences. Form for form. Step by step. We go over the different types of relief to be granted. The type of relief you seek invokes the type of jurisdiction that you fall under. All these people speaking about chancery, equity, and law, common law. The relief that you seek is directly tied to the type of jurisdiction. We go over the CPN, how it's created. We go over how to obtain bonds, where to do it. We go over the different types of discharge and some more. We explain each of those types of discharge. We explain how trademark and copyright associated affiliated with asset protection we go over how to prove trust we go over the different types of fraud we go over the importance that many people would never know so many more i show my own experiences in the audio calls from court cases of how i get different types of sediment checks we go over the different types of discharge there's so much more of that it can't even completely be spoken of here regarding trust we go over how to create it step by step and many more things that will never be shown on YouTube or any other platforms go over other principles that people don't know about and they speak about statute of limitation well fraud does have a statute of limitation but do you know how to subvert it as to why that phrase fraud has no statute of limitation to bring it to life most people don't know There's so many things that we speak about we speak about how to garnish people's checks people's property there's a form that you use for that people don't know about it speak about details regarding foreign trustees speak about spiritual related matters and on the instagram page if you get to join come on over there's also a facebook page where questions and answers are posted and other reminder links to certain videos are shown the next time take care best of luck